What is up YouTube and we have another video for you guys today and we're, today we're going to be talking about the top 5 most improved player of the year candidates for the 2017-2018 NBA season. Let's start this off with Brandon Ingram at number 5. Now the sole reason why I put Brandon Ingram at number 5 is because his preseason woes. And yes, I understand preseason is well, it's just preseason. I know a bunch of you guys are going to comment, yo, what are you talking about? Brandon Ingram's going to have a great season. He's going to take a huge step. He's going to be the face of the franchise. But I just Laker fans that are just not really looking at things the right way. Now the Lakers overall, they're they're a pretty bad team. I don't know why people believe this team will find its way in the playoffs, but that's just me. But overall, I do think that Brandon Ingram is going to take a, a decent step up in terms of scoring the basket, and that's pretty much all he's going to be improving at. Rebounding may go up just a little bit, but the fact that he had Lonzo Ball is also a great rebounder. He's like 6'6", six, six, so he's going to be getting those boards for them, and he's going to be running in transition. I mean, there's no reason for Brandon Ingram to be backing up and getting there to paint and getting no defensive board because he's trying to go up in the break and score those baskets in transition because that's what that's what that's what Lonzo Ball is all about he's about scoring in a transition and the reason why the assist numbers won't go up that high is because well you have Lonzo Ball on the team Lonzo Ball is going to be the main focal playmaker for the team so it's really all Brandon Ingram is going to be forced to being is a is a score he's going to be Brandon Ingram the score for the team and so far that doesn't look very bright he is chucking up a lot of shots in the preseason it looks like he's going to be kind of outplayed by Kyle Kuzma. So maybe Kyle Kuzma may end up being a more more efficient scorer than Brandon Ingram. So and maybe maybe the may, may take the face in terms of being a better scorer. So right as of right now, I don't think Brandon Ingram is going to take that huge step. I do believe he's going to be definitely be a great player, but let's just take things slow with Ingram. I don't think you guys. I think he's going to realize that and going to take a little bit more selective shots. And that's the reason why I don't think he's going to take a huge step, like maybe 18 points per game or something like that. So ultimately, I think Ingram is going to be sitting comfortably at around 13 points per game. So that's why I believe he's at number five. The Utah Jazz is Rodney Hood. Now, I really do like Rodney Hood. I think like this season is going to be the year for him to take that jump and become the focal point on offense for the team. Now, last year, they had Gordon Haywood, which is pretty much their entire team, making all their plays, you know, decent rebounders, scoring baskets, and everything for the team, being a, also a pretty good good playmaker. But I think with the loss of Gordon Haywood, I think Rodney Hood is going to take a massive leap in terms of scoring from 13 a game to 18 a game. I think it's really going to be that good. He's so far in the preseason, he's looking pretty good. It looks like he's going to be probably even hovering above that, probably hitting around 20 a game. But I want to keep it safe. I just want to think that he's going to be at that mark where he's 18 a game, the pro probably the most, the most, the, the the focal score for the team. I don't believe his rebounding will go up that much because you do have Rudy Gobert, so he's going to be taking every rebound possible. And then don't forget about the assist numbers. They, you do have Ricky Rubio, so he won't be making all the plays that Gordon Haywood had to pretty much make. So Ricky Rubio will be taking care of all the playmaking and stuff. So that's why I put him at number four, and also. I want to consider that his injuries are here. This is why I can't put him any higher. If it wasn't for the case of him being banged up all last season, and I feel like it could probably play a role this season, this is why I had to put him at number five. The Portland Trailblazers' Juice of Nurkic. Now, last year's numbers looked pretty damn bad. Even though the moment he entered Portland, he was just turned out to be a great third third option for the team. CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard are definitely going to be doing their things, but I feel like the the Portland Trailblazers is going to need to put everyone else involved, and I think that his numbers last year, uh, with the second half of this season when he got traded, is going to be numbers. Going, to, he's going to have those almost exact same numbers, roughly around 15 points per game. I think that's really good and exceptional for a player like him, especially his field goal percentage will be high. He's definitely going to be the most, the most optional pick and roll sort of player. Maybe pick and roll, maybe occasional pick, pick and pops. I don't think his shooting is that great, but. It, occasionally he will go up there for the pick and pops and also we look for guys rebounding he's definitely going to be down the glass a lot more and getting the rebounds for the team he's definitely going to go up and let's not forget his blocks per game he's definitely been a great defender for the team 
he's definitely going to be chucking shots left and right. And that's why I believe Joseph Nurkic is going to be at number three for most improved player. The Orlando Magic's Jonathan Simmons. Now, my boy Jonathan Simmons is looking like he's going to be taking a massive leap this season. I seriously can't decide between him and the number one player, but I won't get into number one. We'll get to number one when it's time for number one. But I think Jonathan Simmons is going to take a massive leap in terms of scoring, especially because what the Orlando Magic's have is they don't have much scores on the team. And I think Jonathan Simmons is going to be the head, the leader for the team in terms of scoring. He's going to take a massive jump from six points per game, just six points per game. He's going to leap up to 14 a game and be a devastating score for the team. Now, that's the reason why I believe he's at number two. Now, his rebounding numbers probably won't go up because they got a lot of big men in that team, meaning that there's no real reason for him to be, you know, fighting his way in the paint, trying to get those boards. And assist numbers could go up just a bit. You know, only guy that's really a playmaker for the team is Alfred Payton. I know he's still viable for the team, but if for some reason, if he's going to be traded, I think that Jonathan Simmons is going to be the next best playmaker for the team. So four assists per game is pretty damn reasonable for him being a, for him, you know, for Jonathan Simmons. And we see him in the playoffs against the Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets, how good he played. He's already showcased that he can play against some very elite teams. And if he can do that with some very elite teams, I wouldn't even be surprised that he makes a huge step and drops and hops up to 20 a game. But I'm just playing it safe here. I truly think it's going to be hovering around that 14 points per game mark. Now, that's the reason why I believe Jonathan Simmons is at number two. The Chicago Bulls, Chris Dunn. Yes, I'm not joking. I know, Chris Dunn. Like, what the heck are you talking about? That's like the most random player. Like, I, people honestly forgot about him. He's a top, he was a top five pick just a year ago. People seem to have forgotten that. And I seriously think that this is the op, this is the best opportunity for Chris Dunn to take a massive step. And it's just a no-brainer. He has to take a massive step or he's going to be a bust. Now, the reason why I'm very questionable on him is if he doesn't take this massive step, I'm sure he won't find himself in the league anymore, but I truly believe in Chris Dunn. I have high hopes for him. I think in Chicago, the way everything is set up, it's meant for him to have a great season, maybe even better than what I put up right here. Yes, it says that I'm only predicting that he's going to take a huge jump from four points per game to 12, but the fact that right now, Zach Levine, there's major questions on when he's going to be returning. Let's say if he returns by January, even February, and maybe Chicago decides to sit him out for the whole season just to keep it safe. Remember what they did to Ben Simmons when he was expected to come back in January? What if they play that? Play that? What if the Chicago Bulls actually do the same thing? And next thing you know, Chris Dunn is basically basically have a lot of opportunity to be the main scorer for the team. If you look at that damn roster, there's no way there that can make plays and be a scorer for the team. Last year with Minnesota, it was really tough for Chris Dunn to become a you know useful in the team. They had Ricky Rubio, who's a point guard that's pretty much a great playmaker. They didn't really need his playmaking abilities from Chris Dunn because um, because Ricky Rubio was doing that. Andrew Wiggins, a guy who kind of needed the ball at all times, was on the roster, and that made it tough for Chris Dunn to actually be useful with on ball, playing in, playing with the ball. And he also had Carl Anthony Towns, who dropped a lot of points, and let's not forget Zach Levine, who was dropping like 18 a game. So if you got all those guys scoring the basket and pretty much having the ball in his hand, it was pretty damn hard for, Zach, for Chris Dunn to have any opportunity for him to showcase his talent. And yes, he had opportunities, but he was kind of forced to play an off-ball role, and I truly don't think that Chris Dunn is a catch-and-shoot player. His three-point shooting is not that great. He's not meant to be a catch-and-shoot player. He's meant to be a high-tempo player that can take the ball up and down the court, play great defense, get those steals, get in the transition, and score points. And that's why I believe Chris Dunn is going to have that opportunity for him in Chicago, and that's why I put him as number one.